Hey, what up, y'all? Hopefully, y'all been enjoying y'all weekend. Um, this video is going to be intense. Oh, man, um, the 10 most evil pro wrestlers of all time. We already know Chris Benoit is going to be on here. Um, I don't know who else will be on this list. I really don't know. Maybe New Jack? I don't know. Let's check it out, y'all. Unfortunately, there are some pro wrestlers who have done heinous things in their lifetime. Right. From criminal acts to abusing positions of power. Now, unfortunately, we're going to look at 10 of the most evil pro wrestlers of all time. Okay. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. <laughs> Grizzly Smith. Grizzly Smith was the father of legendary wrestler Jake the Snake Roberts. Although Smith was a talented wrestler, his conduct in his personal life made him one of the most detested pro wrestlers of all time. Smith led a life of abuse and torment, so much so that Smith abused a 13-year-old girl, which led to Roberts being conceived. Smith's treatment of Roberts throughout Roberts' childhood meant that Roberts turned to alcohol and drugs, and this is a battle that Roberts has only recently overcome. Number wow. 9. Bob Sweeten. Considered to be one of the most criticized wrestlers of all time, Bob Sweeten was loathed by virtually everyone he worked with. Legendary ring announcer Jim Ross once described Sweeten as a miserable human being and someone who nobody wanted to be around. In 1990, Sweeten was convicted of sexually assaulting his own daughter, which truly made him one of the most evil individuals to ever step foot in the wrestling ring with. His ex-wife once described Sweeten as a waste of skin as far as I'm concerned. He fried his brain with drugs, deserted his children, abused them emotionally, physically, sexually, and mentally. Number eight, Bill Watts. The removal of Bill Watts as Bill executive Watts? vice president of WCW was rather controversial. Watts had made some rather crude public comments in relation to minority groups, which no doubt made the skin crawl of a number of WCW superstars. During an interview with PW Torch, Watts stated, If you want a business and put your money in, why shouldn't you be able to discriminate? It's your business. If free enterprise is going to make or break it, should you be able to discriminate? It should be that, by God. And if you're going to open the doors in America, you can discriminate. Why the heck not? The full interview is just far worse, and we can't even put it on YouTube. Number seven, Buck Zomhoff. And for those not aware of Buck Zomhoff, he was an enhancement talent for WWE back in the 80s and 90s. He was notably the first person that The Undertaker ever put in a body bag, and he was even Triple H's first ever opponent in WWE. Wrestling career aside, Buck is a convicted sex offender. He was first jailed in the summer of 86 after he was found guilty of misconduct involving a minor. He was then arrested wow. back in 2013 and was charged with multiple charges of misconduct, including abusing his own daughter. In 2014, Buck was sentenced to 25 years in prison. Number 6, Bill DeMott. But Bill DeMott never found too much success as a pro wrestler. He did have a very great success as a trainer, so much so that he was the head trainer for FCW and NXT. DeMar seemed to have a solid reputation as a head trainer, but this was until 2015 when a number of allegations of DeMar abusing his power for his own gain surfaced. It was revealed that DeMar had verbally and physically abused talents throughout his career, and that he even used a number of racist and homophobic insults towards talent. Wow. A disturbing story involved DeMar insisting that talent strip naked and perform stink faces on fellow trainees. Former trainee Kevin Matthews was extremely open in relation to DeMott's training methods, and he would state that DeMott made the place a living hell for anyone who was a part of his clique. He even described DeMott as a rather disturbed, delusional bipolar man who needs to seek professional help ASAP. Wow. In March of 2015, DeMott resigned from WWE in order to save WWE from any public embarrassment. He also denied all the allegations made towards him, but when DeMott appeared on the episode of Talk is Jericho, DeMott would state that you're either going to hang or you're not. It's not to break you down, it's to prepare you. DeMar has been virtually blacklisted from the wrestling industry since 2015. Number five, the Dynamite Kid. Oh, now, the yeah. Dynamite Kid is often cited as one of the greatest yeah. in-ring talents to ever come out of the UK. There are a number of rather barbaric acts which overshadow everything that Dynamite achieved during his wrestling career. He was known to abuse his first wife, Michelle Smadu, and this was depicted on an episode of Dark Side yeah, of the Ring. Yeah, I saw that. In the episode, crazy. Michelle went into detail about an incident, but Dynamite held a gun to her head, and she was actually fearful that he was going to kill her. Michelle was state, he lost his mind. He had me in some kind of hold and my jaw went. The kids were there. She'd never seen anything like this. They were crying. I'm trying to act like... 
No, Daddy's having a moment. It's gonna be fine. He's gonna leave. He goes, no, I think you should have him go. I was like, I'm the one pregnant. I'm the one with a toddler. All my stuff is here. All the clothes are here. He went downstairs and got a gun and said, if you don't have it over 15 minutes, I'm gonna blow your head off. I was like, no, you're not. He's like, I will. Michelle and Dynamite divorced the same year as this incident, and she thankfully managed to live a happy life away from the abuse and torment. That's awesome. Number four, Abdullah the Butcher. Oh, yeah. One of the things that wasn't mentioned during Abdullah the Butcher's Hall of Fame induction in 2011 was the fact that he knowingly wrestled with Hep C. In 2006, Abdullah was wrestling Havel, and following the match, he contracted Hep C, and as a result, he decided to sue Abdullah for knowingly infecting him with the disease. Abdullah's action showed he never cared about anyone he was in the ring with, and he didn't care about the fact that he was willingly spreading a potentially life-altering disease. That's so Number crazy. Number three, Jose Gonzalez. The murder of Bruiser Brody is one of the most well-known stories in pro wrestling. The person responsible for his death was allegedly Jose Gonzalez, who shockingly never served any jail time for the murder. This occurred back in the summer of 1988, as Brody was stabbed backstage during a wrestling event in Puerto Rico. Gonzalez was acquitted of the crime after a jury accepted that he was acting in self-defense. Gonzalez faced no punishment whatsoever, and he continued to wrestle for a number of years in what would become one of the most controversial and wrongful incidents in pro wrestling history. Number two, Fabulous Moolah. WWE likes to present the Fabulous Moolah as one of the key figures in women's wrestling, but Moolah led a life of deceit and cruelty as she financially exploited women she helped. Man Maxine, who was trained by Mula, appeared on the Two Man Power Trip podcast in 2021 and had this to say in relation to Mula's actions. I don't feel like I knew Mula as well as the others who were trained by her. She has her staunch defenders and that's great, and I'm sure she had some people she treated well, but I wasn't one of them. If you judged her on her actions, then she wasn't a great person. I think she took advantage of the girls that trained under her. She would send out some of the girls out to the men and those men would pay Mula to have sex with some of those male wrestlers. She tried to get me to do that, and I spoke to the guy point blank. What are you expecting here? It was pretty obvious to me that it was a situation where Mula was pimping out some of the girls. Not all of the girls, because I've heard from some of them that it wasn't their experience, but I know firsthand she did pimp out some of the girls. It was definitely my experience, and I wasn't the only one. In 2018, it was announced that WWE would host a Women's Battle Royal in Moolah's name and honor WrestleMania 34. However, they would be forced to remove Moolah's association with the Battle Royal after fan outrage to WWE promoting Moolah in such a positive light over social media. Even WrestleMania sponsor Snickers reportedly got involved and insisted that they didn't want to be associated with a woman that performed such terrible acts. And number one, Chris Benoit. Now, Benoit was beloved by fans and he was well established for being one of the greatest technical wrestlers to ever lace a pair of wrestling boots. But sadly, his remorseless actions in 2007 erased Benoit's existence from the history books. As quite rightly, WWE didn't want to associate with a man who committed such a horrible deed. Although fans may wish to try and remember Benoit's work in WWE and the memories he created, his actions during his final days are simply too disturbing to ignore, and his memory will be forever tainted. They have approached 10 of the most evil pro wrestlers of all time. Be sure to leave a comments down below, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content. Wow. Wow. Yeah, this list definitely got it right. It's crazy, you know, some of the people that were mentioned earlier, like, man, abuse children, like... Bro, that's just like how do you how how can you just do something like that? Like I don't understand. Like what? I I don't even want to go down that route. I you you can't understand something like that. Like man, that Chris Benoit bro killed his wife, his son. Yeah, these dude, these people are sick, man. This def this list definitely got it right. And you know what's funny? You could have put any one of those people at number one, which is the craziest part. Like, man, y'all let me know what y'all think uh, about this video. Like the video, show me some love, and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, peace out. Let me know if there's any other wrestling videos y'all want me to react to as well. Peace out, y'all.